Pure Fiction is the newest game mode in Honkai Star Rail, and I wanted to give you some tips on how to get as many stars as possible even on a lower level account. This account has multiple unbuilt units, and I was still able to get 11 out of 12 stars. I want to talk about some great units for you to use, and some that you might not even expect being extremely valuable in this content. So, let's get started. My first tip is watch out for overkilling enemies. What I mean by this is typically it makes a lot of sense in content to buff up your main DPS unit and have them crush the enemy. You're throwing every buff at them, you're speeding them up, you're trying to make them this damage dealer, but in a lot of cases, because of this debuff that is applied, you don't actually need that much damage. Now, in most content, you would want to feed energy into someone like Dan Hung and just crush the enemies. But the effects are so strong that there is an argument for just feeding energy into someone like Pela or Fu Xuan, who can then do an area of effect tack and stack up this passive more. And I can also shred their defenses, making it easier for Dan Hung to pop them and blow them up. And so it's always going to change and different pure fiction bonuses are going to you know, vary this information, but for right now, there's a lot of situations where area of effect ultimates are just amazing. They're, they're, they're actually crushing. And there's many situations where with my Fu Xuan, I don't need to provide any sort of buff, but it makes more sense to use a skill point here and start gaining energy so that I can alt uh, future enemies. Because I don't need a bunch of skill points to set off chain reactions and kill everything. I can use a few skill points here and deal with this boss and the area of effect will, you know, send this off and kill it, but I don't need that damage. And that's the big thing, is in a situation like this, I don't want to blow three ultimates on this wave of enemies because it's simply wasting it. I can use Dan Hung here and I can pop this ultimate and I can kill these enemies and send off a bit of a chain reaction. But if I had Fu Xuan and I had Pela ready to go there with their ultimate, it would be essentially overkill. Even right now, a lot of these enemies are essentially marked for death. All I need to do is blow on them lightly and they're going to die. So you need to be a little bit careful and make sure that you're not pumping out three ultimates every single wave because you're just overkilling the enemies by like 50% or, or you're doubling the amount of damage they actually need. So whittling down a few of these enemies they just need to get a turn and they're dead. Like it's, it's just a constant feed. And so it makes a lot more sense in some of these situations to save your ultimate for a big wave of enemies. Yes, I could pop off and kill this thing or I can start getting some skill points. I can kind of balance things out right now and we'll just get cheeky, make sure it's dead. Now I can go in and I can start, you know, ulting these enemies and start the chain reaction again. So just be careful that you're not feeding too much damage in. Right here, these are, you know, shockingly weak enemies, uh, but I want to be sure. I've got some, some energy coming in. This should be enough to easily clear this wave. Like, I, I don't even have to, to do any damage with my, my main DPS. They're all going to start chaining off of each other, right? And, and now, because I've I've cleared that wave. Honestly, I probably had too much damage there. Uh, I can start looking towards how am I going to set off that reaction again? I started to get some energy. Boom. Here we go. Let's start the chain again. It doesn't make sense to buff Dan Hung here. It's, it's not going to provide any value to my team hitting even harder. I just need to clear them. And so some of these awesome DPS units that you've been building, they might not be the fastest and most efficient for this content. So it's something to be very careful of. Uh, you know, the fact that a little Pela there can, <laughs> can pop off and do some damage um but it's being efficient with your skill points being efficient with your energy and and just making sure that if you're going to go kill some things make sure that they've got these stacks and and start the chain reaction you know in the in the case of me here this would probably be a good target because i have enough damage to kill that bad boy and and with all the other damage that it's going to apply it's just going to go pop 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 and start killing everything else so um or, or it should should next turn. Yeah, there we go. Now, now, now we're starting to cook. Now, my next tip is follow-up attacks are very crazy in this mode. With the current setup, there's a lot of situations where you chain multiple attacks back to back to back, and a lot of these enemies don't need to be hit hard. They just need to be hit. And by tagging these enemies, you're killing them, essentially. Like, you're marking these enemies for death, and they just need to be hit. And so if you use multiple enemies that have, or, or characters that have ways of procking these effects, 
you essentially send off these chain reactions wave after wave after wave and you're creating this situation where um like again now himika is gonna go you don't need lots of damage you need damage a lot of times and so i'm finding that characters that are even unbuilt like herda my, my level 60 herda being able to break many of these units is clearing wave after wave after wave and it's just her existing on the field her applying this ultimate that's going to do zero damage is enough to clear an entire wave what is this damage let's see here uh okay it's twenty thousand. that's better than i expected um but you don't need it to succeed you don't need that damage and you can see here i'm onto the final wave now um and i've got two turns still i've got two full turns I haven't even moved hardly. It's all my characters getting turns off of these effects. So uh, very impressed with how some of these characters uh, are performing, and I would recommend you give them a try. You might notice I don't have a healer. There's many situations where you don't need any sort of healing. The healing actually does nothing for you. Uh, the reason I say that is because enemies are dying so quickly or they're getting weakness broke so frequently that they don't have time to lay into your teammates. And you also don't get punished if your teammates die. It, it, is, it doesn't really matter if your teammates die. Um, and so it makes a lot of sense to um, shell out damage. And I would recommend uh, a few different units for that. And, and having them on your team is more valuable than a healer. Let me go over some of those units right now. So in the current setup, Himiko is very solid. As you're breaking all the different enemies, she gets turns, she kills them, and it sets off crazy chain reactions. And even this partially built Herda is popping off. I've got her light cone and I've got some decent traces, but she's far off from her max potential. And she's still doing enough damage to kill the enemies, to pop them, and, and start the chain reactions herself. Herda is pretty crazy because whenever an enemy gets below 50%, she just gets a turn. She ends up getting lots of energy, which gives her area of effect attacks to start more and more chain reactions. Herda is doing very well in this content. Pela is very good because she does area of effect and shreds their defenses, and so I would recommend you give her a try if you haven't. And Clara is doing insanely good. There are many enemies that will get a turn eventually, and when they do and attack her, she starts a huge chain reaction and clears the entire wave without her needing a bunch of speed or the opportunity to move herself. If you do have a team that needs some sustain, Fushuan is one of the best options right now because her ultimate will tag multiple enemies and give you stack. And believe it or not, Fire MC can do some work with the area of effect and help doing breaks with Himiko or Herda. Let's just be honest, Argenti is the best character in the game right now for this content. He's absolutely busted. You just constantly spam ultimates, and if you pair him with Ting Yun and maybe even Hua Hua, he just ults over and over and over again and clears wave after wave. It's 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 actually cheating. Now, Jing Liu is very good, but Jing Liu with Blade, using them together, is absolutely crazy. Because she drains HP, which makes him follow up, which just causes a whole bunch of hijinks to happen. Uh, very highly recommend trying out that combo if you have them. Our boy Jing Yuan is doing fantastic as well. As I said before, area of effect is really important. Ultimates are really important. But just getting a chance to tag those enemies and start a chain reaction is big. He can use his skill and just kill an enemy. His ultimate or the Thunderlord coming in can clear entire waves. And so he has a lot of potential overall. He's doing very well. It's also important to note that light cones that give some sort of energy can be extremely good or other ones that generate energy for your team are kind of busted in this content. Action forward can also be very good just to give you more opportunities to do damage and set off those chain reactions. Also light cones that stack or have big damage for killing enemies because a lot of them are so weak it's very easy to stack these things up and get maximum potential very quickly. There's situations where light cones like this are actually OP because it allows you to get one or two more ultimates off over the course of the few rounds that you have which is thousands upon thousands of extra points because of how easy it is to kill the enemies so don't sleep on things like this don't prioritize it if you don't have them built but just consider swapping a few things around if you haven't already and again because the passive effects are so strong you can get away with you know kind of more unbuilt units because all you need to do is get them to alt make sure they have some of their energy traces and things like that but you don't need to funnel a ton of resources in there and they're going to function at like 80 to 90% of their full capacity. 
Now, you do have limited turns, so you do want strong units, and in the case of my Himiko, I want to invest more in her, because I don't want an enemy to have a sliver of HP, because that wastes a lot of time. I need to get onto that next round, that next wave of enemies, so that I can clear them again with the next ultimate, with the next ability. And so you still do need damage units, but you can get away and get a lot of the stars with just half-assed teams. Now, this is one of the first times ever where you actually don't really need to run any sort of sustain or healers because in a lot of cases, you will kill the units before they can kill you. They just don't have time to do damage. And, and yes, you might lose someone along the way, but if they get through a few waves and use their ultimate a few times, it's typically enough to get almost maximum value from them. And so I wouldn't stress out too, too much about bringing some sort of sustain units because... As long as you have any area of effect ultimates, you will get the majority of the stars that are available. And, and I would definitely recommend that you try a few things, even with those unbuilt characters, just get them on the field, get them, uh, you know, popping off with their ultimates and things. This Clara is terrible, but she's still enough for me to get enough points to clear most of this content. So that's exciting for me. But I should also say, eventually, a lot of these bonuses will change, and it might function completely differently where single target units are best. So don't hyper-invest in characters you don't like or you don't think are going to work. Try to clear it with unbuilt characters or, or very weakly built characters first, and then if you want to min-max here and there, you can. But this rotation is going to change things drastically, so I don't want you spending weeks and weeks farming up Herda when she might be trash in the next two different Pure Fiction runs. So I would highly recommend you focus on getting the self-modeling resin every month if you can. I wasted a few of these getting the resources, so I'm going to have to wait a little bit longer to get it. But self-modeling resin is a game changer for building characters. I have so many that just need a different chest piece or a different boot or an orb. And so getting these is an absolute priority from this content. It's also worth noting that by beating this content, you get a free Lynx. Even at Eidolon Zero, Lynx is an insanely good unit. She has absolutely carried both of my accounts. She can cleanse, she can heal. She's a very good unit. Where'd she go? Hello? There you are. I would highly recommend you build Lynx. Unless you've got Luocha and, you know, other sustained units and you don't want to, I understand. But if you're a newer player to the game, Lynx is someone you should definitely invest into and I would recommend her to everyone. If you do get Eidolons down the road, they get more and more valuable, with E6 being exceptionally good with Blade. Um, I would highly recommend uh, this unit to anyone and the fact that she's free is just juice for any free-to-play players. So those are my main tips. Um, if you think of anything amazing, leave it in the comment section down below and I'll pin it. Okay, thanks for watching. Have a good day. See you later.